About a year ago, I made a video that was called The Song That Changed My Life, and it was about this song, Never Found the Time, by America off their first record. It was the first song I ever learned when I broke my ankle in seventh grade and was stuck sitting on the couch with a cast the entire summer, and I started to learn how to play the guitar. Well, there's another album that really changed my life, but this was in 10th grade. For Christmas, my dad bought me a record by a guitarist named Joe Pass, and I was like, what is this? You know, I'd seen him listen to it, but I never paid attention. I was a rock, I played rock stuff, you know? I mean, uh, Zeppelin was putting out records, Peter Frampton had Frampton Comes Alive, all this stuff was coming out at the time, right? Boston, Black Sabbath, Jimi Hendrix, there was, everything was going on in rock at that moment. I'm not thinking about jazz, like jazz, it's for old people. My dad's like, if you ever learn to play like this, you've accomplished something with your life. It's like, what? My dad was a very simple guy. He worked on the railroad, right? So he never said stuff like that. But this album really meant something to him. And what it is, it's a solo guitar record, a solo jazz guitar record. But it's not just any solo jazz guitar record. It's called Virtuoso for a reason. As a matter of fact, there's really no other jazz guitar record that's like this, even to this day. And this was actually recorded in 1973. So the record sat next to our record player for probably two months or so, unopened with a cellophane on it. So one day, summertime, I'm like, I'm going to listen to this record. We, we had a very small house. Our house was probably 1,100 square feet or so. Three bedrooms, nine people, one bathroom. My dad liked to play golf. He had this little metal golf thing that he practiced putting in the living room. And our living room was probably about 12 feet long or so. That was it. So he just put the ball on the carpet and practiced. So I would sit and listen to music and I'd put the ball into the thing. And I'd spend an hour listening to a record and just practice putting. So I was like, let me listen to this Joe Pass record. So I open it up. I start listening to it and I put this on. The first song is called Night and Day. It's a Cole Porter tune. Just sitting there listening, like, it's like, wow, a lot of chords. Now, I'd heard records like this before my dad played stuff, but not this record, not solo jazz guitar. And I was like, what was that? Sweet picking. And I was thinking, like, are there that many chords? So that's Night and Day. Then the next tune is Stella by Starlight. Not... And I heard those lines, I was like, wow. What was that? I'd never heard so many chords. The thing that I really liked is all the extended lines like that. Because if you think about it, this is the year Van Halen came out. So I'm listening to Eddie, I'm listening to Eruption, the first Van Halen record. I'm really getting into solo guitar stuff. Pink Floyd, David Gilmore solos, Jimmy Page solos, Hendrix solos, Frampton solos, anything that's on the radio, anything that's on uh, that people are listening to, any of my friends. I'm learning every guitar solo I can learn, all the famous guitar solos, all the famous tunes. But this was like, wow, this is hard. I don't know any of these chords or anything. So I keep listening, and there are some songs on here, like there's a song, Cherokee. that. And so I'm like, is this guy improvising this? Well, obviously he is. Oh my God. Now he plays with Oscar. Peterson on a lot of records. For those of you that saw my Oscar video, he's not in that, Barney Kessel is, but Joe plays with Oscar a lot. Listen to this right here. Okay, this, <laughs> this record is insane. 
Joe just sat down and in 50 minutes played 12 tunes, most of the biggest standards ever. I didn't really know that at the time. Night and Day, Stella by Starlight, Here's That Rainy Day, My Old Flame, How High the Moon, Cherokee, which I just played, Round Midnight, The Song Is You. When I heard these things, here's The Song Is You. I mean, I recognize the melodies from my dad playing other versions of them. And I was even intrigued, like, what is that? What kind of guitar is that? It's not acoustic. Now, in retrospect, it's a jazz gu hollow body guitar with just a mic on it. No amp. I don't think it has an amp. If it does, it's very low. But the thing that really... Wow. And I thought, could I figure anything like this out? Well, I don't know any of those chords, but I have a good ear. So I'm, I'm listening through this thing and I think to myself, my dad is like an impossible guy to impress. I wonder if I can figure out anything to play for him before he comes home tonight. My dad would get home about five o'clock from work, drive his truck in Penn Central he worked for, for the railroad. So I was like, listen to this song, All the Things You Are. And I was like... I said, I think I can figure that out. So I rewind. This is on a record player. Rewind it. Okay. I recognize that those first two chords are the same chord, just moved up. So I'm messing around, and I find the chord. And then I know that this next chord is up here. Okay, I figured out the first two chords. How much more can I do? I was like... Oh, yeah. So I start messing around. And then I'm like, where's that? Okay, there's that note. So I start figuring these things out. Then I hear it. Then I'm like, is that it? Is that it? Now, I have a chord book, too, and I know some of these chords. I know some of these minor sevens and stuff, but I'm kind of trying to find where the notes are. Then I'm like, oh, they're doing the same pattern that they did. Same pattern right there. So I'm realizing... I can start recognizing some of these chords. That sounds like a major seventh chord. I heard that... So there's not that many single note lines in here. This is where it starts to get tough, right? What is that? And then I start thinking, I wonder if this is just inversions. I'm like, oh, those are just inversions of the same chord. I hear that. Sounds just like that. And then. So over the course of the next couple of hours, I learned that. And then I start learning this part. Then I start seeing, okay, this is the same section repeated. Then I hear that. I can hear that's an open D string. So I start putting these things together, start taking notes, and then I start learning 
this tune. So when my dad gets home that night, he walks in the door, I'm like, hey dad, check this out. And I start playing. <laughs> I think I took the ending. Which is basically a combination of the beginning and the ending of the tune. I kind of made up my own version of it. My dad looks at me and he's like, how'd you learn that? I said, I just listened to the record. He's like, how'd you learn all those chords? And I said, I just messed around until I found the right chords. I could tell where there were patterns. You know, that first chord I heard, figured it out. I was like, yeah, the second chord is that same chord, just moved up. And I just, just listened to the bass notes and figured out where they are. I could figure out the, I could figure out the chord, basic chord progression because it's, you know, major sevens, minor sevens. There's some dominant chords, there's some flat nine chords and things like that. For the most part though, most of these are pretty basic. Now, some of the inversions, this, that took a little bit of time to figure out. Those kind of things took a little bit more time, but over the course of probably three or four hours, I figured all that out and I was able to play it. That one moment there where my dad saw that, he was just like, pretty good. And from my dad, that was amazing. I think this is why he gave me the record. He thought I could do it. My dad retired in 1979. The picture from earlier in the video was taken that year. He actually took that selfie himself for a photography class that he took when he retired. And in the summertime, when I was in college, when I wasn't working my job, I had a job every summer, but I would sit on our front porch, our screened-in porch, and practice for hours and hours and hours. Scales, arpeggios, new new songs, learning, you know, Joe Pass solos, whatever, Larry Carlton solos, anything that was out. Rock, jazz, funk, blues. My dad would just sit there and rock in his rocking chair and never say a word for hours. He was incredibly supportive. He never would say anything, but he was there every day. When I'd go out to practice, my dad would come out and sit down. From then on, I started playing jazz along with playing rock, and I started taking these records apart and learning everything on them. And then that just expanded. I mean, I had already learned some fusion solos. I learned some, some solos. I learned Larry Carlton. The Kid Charlemagne, Don't Take Me Alive. I learned Brother to Brother, Carlos Rios. That came actually after this record, after I'd gotten this. But I started learning stuff like that. I had heard Holdsworth. The first UK record came out in 78. Like I said, Van Halen. So there were all these very sophisticated guitar records that were coming out at the time. So I had a lot of dexterity from working on all that stuff. This stuff tested my ear the most, though. This is where I improved the most is actually listening to Virtuoso. And if there's one record that I ever suggest to people that want to get into jazz guitar, it's this record. Joe Pass Virtuoso came out in 1973. He made a series of four Virtuoso records for Pablo, this being the first. They're all improvised, they're all one take, and he's playing standards, but he's making everything up on the spot, and it's unbelievable. So this album really changed my life. And honestly, everything that I do on this channel is informed by this record and the skills that I gained from learning the things on this particular album. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also, the Beato book, if you want to learn about music theory, that's how you do it.
and check out my Beato Ear Training course at BeatoEarTraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching. Oh,